look at it, you want to make sure it's properly sealed, that it's not open anywhere. You want to make sure there are no water spots on it. What would, what would that mean if we had a water spot? That means the seal is broken somewhere. Why? Because Not necessarily inside. What if I laid this down and there had been a glass there that, you know how it sweats? Yeah. And I laid it there and the package got wet. It Would this package through. be sterile? No. Mm -hmm. No, because the wicking properties. You know, when something gets wet, it's going to pull that moisture through and it's going to get the package inside wet. So it's considered contaminated. So if there's anything that looks like it's not okay, then it's not okay. You don't use that package. Okay. So you can also check, some of them have an expiration date, some of them have a manufacturer date. You want to check the, the date to make sure that it's, this one has a manufacturer date. Well, this one's 2006. So we have put on gloves before they totally disintegrate when you put them on. <laughs> so that definitely would work. Okay? So, when you open your gloves, they open from the top. Don't open them. Just watch me, and then you're going to get practice. When you open them, open it, and I'm going to take this package out. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. All right? And your glove package, this is it. It looks like a book. And the nice thing about these glove packages is they're kind of made for illiterates because you can open it up, and they show you a picture of the right glove and the left glove. And when they show those pictures, they'll show the hands palm up. So that's how the gloves are going to be packaged. The gloves are going to be in this package just like this, palm up. All right? And then one of them will say right and one will say left. Now I'm going to put this down so that you can kind of see on top of it, even though it's below the level of my waist. Um, do you see how the gloves are packaged in here in the fold? See how that's folded so that the glove doesn't stick out or flop out? When you open this up, what I like to do, you would be amazed at how intimidated students can get by this package. If I fold this down, what does it want to do? It wants to flop back over. And oftentimes when we open it up, it wants to flop back in. You're trying to pick up the glove and, the, and it's flopping back in. So to prevent that from happening, we call these creases in your packaging memory. It has memory. So that when I fold it back here, it wants to go back like it always did. So we need to break that memory. And you do that by just, when you open it, just kind of crunch it. You see how now it doesn't go back? There you go. Now there's a little fold along the edge, and that's what we use to grasp hold of on the package, so that I can slide my fingers under here and open it up. It, once again, it has a memory, so you see how it can flop, flop closed. So I'm going to open it up, and I like taking the package, I'm holding it, and I like tinting. Do you see how I did that? I made it buckle mm -hmm. at the top, and that breaks the memory. So you see how it's staying open now? I don't have to worry about it flopping. Now I'm going to give you the second principle of sterile technique. The first one was what? Below Anything below the level of the waist is The second one is, is the outer inch of a sterile border is considered contaminated. Okay? So this outer inch, I can put my finger on that outer inch because it's contaminated. Can I go inside of there? No. No. So that's principle number two. Principle number three, thou shalt not cross over a sterile field. I have contaminated. Why is that contaminating? Stuff can, stuff can fall off. Stuff can fall off. Stuff like what? Skin cells. Skin cells. Huh? Just dust. Dust. Right. So you do not reach. You do not reach over a sterile field. And really, we don't like to talk over a sterile field. When you're doing a dressing change. There's a droplet. 
you need to tell it right. You tell your patient, Miss Jones, I'm going to be performing a dressing change, and I will not be talking during this procedure because I don't want to get germs on the sterile field or in the wound. Right. So I've gotten my gloves open, and I want you to look at these gloves. I'll put the table down. What do you notice about them? They have a cuff. They have a huge cuff, don't they? And if y'all want to stand close by where you can see me put them on. And one of the trickiest things is when a glove really fits well, uh, they'll be tight. They'll be snug. So with these, that thumb is up in that cuff, okay? So you have to keep that in mind. When I put it on a glove, I try to, to aim that thumb in first. Now, how did I say they're put up in there? Palm up or palm down? Palm, palm, palm up. Palm up. So when I put my hand in it, I'm going to do palm up. Why would you think that is? So you're not having to flip the glove around. Am I doing the dressing change with the backs of my hands? Mm -hmm. No, I'm doing it more with this side of my hands. And sometimes when these gloves are really tight, they're, when we're pulling them on, they're going to roll on the back of the hand, and that might contaminate the hand, but we're not doing the dressing change with the back. You never want to put your hand in this way because we can't see the palm, and it may roll on the palm. Okay? Who's right-handed? I am. Do we have any lefties? Me. We have one in our other group, and that's perfectly fine. Normally, we put on our dominant one first. So all right-handed, and you're going to be our lefty. So you'll put your left one on first. So I'm right-handed, so I'm going to put my right one on first. When you pick up the first one, you pick it up from the cuff. And I like getting my thumb inside of that. And I, y'all, I over-dramatize this. I pick it up. I step back away from my sterile field. Why? Because you don't want to contaminate it. Right. It's so easy to want to pick this up and it's a, coming up and drag it across the table. So pick it up, step back. Because when I'm putting my hand in there, I want to be away from that where I can bump it. Got my palm up, thumb tucked in. Don't worry about the cuff. See how that cuff's still folded? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about straightening it out. If you try and start straightening it out, you're bound to touch something and contaminate. Second glove has to go on a little differently than the first because I'm picking this up. Right, so I'm going to take these fingers and, I'm, and I can use my thumb. I can touch anything on here now, right? Mm -hmm. Except for the outer inch because sterile sterile second glove I'm going to tuck my fingers up underneath the cuff and take your time get it the way you want to and then I'm going to pick it up what am I going to do step back step back away from my sterile field now when this hand goes into this glove the whole inside of the glove becomes contaminated if my thumb is touching, is holding on right here, what is it holding on to? The inside of the glove, right? Mm -hmm. So if I do this, what becomes contaminated? Your thumb. My thumb. Do y'all see that? Mm -hmm. So when you pick up this second glove, I've got my fingers up underneath the cuff, hitchhike. Get that thumb out of the way. Because we have a tendency to want to grip and pull. Get that thumb out of the way. See how I spread my fingers a little bit? Got my palm up. Now I'm going to do something funky. <laughs> Am I okay? Yeah. Sure. I can fix it. So if you get two fingers in one, which can happen, particularly, Shay, when you're putting on those seven and a halves, once you get them on, it's a little harder if you get two fingers in one finger hole with the first glove. 
Okay. So what are our sterile principles? Number one? Anything below the waist is contaminated. Number two? Outer edge. Outer edge. Inch. Inch. Number three? Anything I do not cross over. Okay. Okay. Can I touch this? Yes. Yes, I can touch this. Um, just be real careful when you start moving stuff around because you don't want to touch anything that's not sterile. All right? Now, to take them off, you take them off just like you did with your plain gloves. Grasp it by the palm. Do you see how big that is on my hand? Mm -hmm. okay, you, you want it nice and snug. And then reach up underneath with the second one without touching the outside of the glove and pull it over. Now, I want to show you how, and then we would throw that away. But I know you're going to want to practice with your gloves, and when you take them off, they're going to look like this. And to get them right side, to get them turned the right way, you can do it like this. Now, grab it at the wrist, and just push the air into the fingers. Now, this glove is inside out, and it's going to matter because if you have one inside out and one right side, it's going to make it look like you've got two rights or two lefts. Mm -hmm. And the way you can tell if a glove is inside out, look at this finger. Do you see how it's, it's kind of buckled in? Oh, yeah. You see where the seam normally would be? Mm -hmm. So let me turn it <coughs> the other way. There, now can you see where the seam mm -hmm. is straight mm -hmm. again? Right. Let's see what this one looks like. I think this one is. And that one's good. Now, when you practice, you can practice as many times with a pair of gloves until they totally don't work anymore. If they get real sticky, you can get just a shake of powder to put in there and rejuvenate them. And when we do checkoffs, you'll use a brand new pair of gloves. So you don't want to keep you don't want to use up all of your packets of sterile gloves. And it's so important guys to master this skill because after this skill we're going to have a sterile dressing change. This is going to be a component. <coughs> we're going to put in Foley catheters which has sterile gloves. This will be a component. We'll be doing trach care, which will have to put on sterile gloves. So it's so important to, um, to understand that this is critical. This is like the foundation. And once you get your gloves, and the understanding of this is a sterile field, that's gonna apply to every other sterile field. You know, if we have a patient who has a big abdominal wound that's left open, and we're having to have, say, 24 by fours, and you know, a whole table full of supplies, we're gonna treat it the same way we treat this, the same principles. When you put in a Foley catheter, and you have a patient up in, their knees flexed, and the urethra's down there, and we're, we got our head down here trying to, to find what we need to, can we be leaning over our sterile field? No. 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 And you will do that. So we have to think about all of those things. That, that <clears> we can't have that there. We're going to have to move that.